Welcome to this video tutorial on how to use clipping planes to make cutaway drawings in Rhino 8. In this video I'm going to be using clipping planes to cut away at this building model here, revealing the structure, the walls and other components of the building in a cutaway style drawing. To do this, clipping planes in Rhino 8 work exactly the same as they do in Rhino 7, but this time they come with a few extra features which allow us to be a little bit more in control of the models we're clipping. So to create a clipping plane, we're just going to type in clipping plane into the command bar. We're going to draw out a rectangle which will represent our clipping plane, and it doesn't matter how big this rectangle is. As you can see, it creates a small little icon here which is our clipping plane, and we can move this up and down and it will clip our model in terms of where its location is in 3D space. Now this is exactly the same as Rhino 7, but actually this also comes with a few more features that we're going to jump into in how we can then control exactly which layers of the model are being clipped. Now for this example I'm just going to rotate my plane 90 degrees just using the gumball and holding the shift key to rotate it, and then we're going to roll this plane into the section view of our model like so. Now for this first clip I want to clip this whole part of the model but then I also want to start to reveal certain layers of the building as we move along down this section. Now to do this I'm going to create a copy of this clipping plane. I'm just going to use the copy tool to copy it there and with this second one I'm going to select the clipping plane like so and we're going to go to the properties menu just by clicking on this rainbow wheel here. Now you'll see in the properties menu we suddenly have a lot more properties that we can play around with with these clipping planes. The first of these I'm going to look at is this objects clipped option and this allows us to be very specific with the objects we're cutting away at within our clipping plane. Now for this by default it's set to all but if we click on that option and go include selected I can then go via layers and we can select which layers we'd like to include within this clip. Now to do this I'm just going to hold down the control key and we're going to select all the layers that I want to clip in this case. So let's select the walls, the inner walls, the grass bank, we'll do the glass, we're going to do the timber here and we're going to do the floor and we're going to hit OK. And there you can see we're cutting everything away apart from this kind of brown metal piece here. So we're just going to pull this back slightly maybe to about here. Then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to copy that clipping plane like so. Move it back a little bit. And for this one we're going to go back to the layers and this time I'm going to deselect the timber, deselect the floor and hit OK. And there you can see we're revealing the structure. So essentially I'm just copying this plane each time and with each one I'm kind of cutting away at something different. So we can do it one more time here, move it into the place that we need it, maybe about just about here. And this time we're going to go back to the layers and we're not going to cut away at the inner walls or the walls like so. So you can see I'm just slowly kind of revealing different layers of the building like so. And the fun part with this is once we've created a few of these you can then start to fine tune it by pulling in and out different lines on your clipping planes to reveal or hide different elements. So maybe this structure is a bit too much, we're going to pull that in slightly until we've got the kind of view that we want, like so. So this is very powerful in being able to start to pull away and cut away at different parts of your building to hide and reveal different elements. You can also go back and say actually on this layer I don't want to clip or maybe this one, these sort of inner walls. So you can actually start to be a bit more selective about what you're clipping in here to be a bit more in control of the layers that are being clipped. So it's kind of very intuitive, very easy to customize as you go along as well. Now for this drawing, I'm also going to clip the back of the kind of model and the front. So we can do that again just by copying this clipping plane, moving it along. This time I'm going to put it back to all and we're just going to rotate it around using that gumball and that way we can cut away at this side and then I'm going to do the same copy that plane flip it around this side move it along and pull it in a little bit so we're cutting away at this part of the model too so we're left just with this sort of fragment here 
and you can see there we've sort of cut away at this skin, cut away at the other one, and we can now sort of play around with these to fine tune exactly how we want that cut line to appear. Maybe I'll do this actually, like so, to reveal a bit more of that structure. So there you can see this is how the kind of clipping planes work in Rhino 8 and the kind of power we have in order to cut away at certain aspects of the model. Now once you're happy with your clips and you've kind of got a nice view that you're working with with your model, we can then start to turn this into a drawing which we can then export to showcase our particular technical detail in this case. To do this I'm actually going to use the sort of viewport displays and we're going to go down here and we're going to set it to the pen mode. And here you can see it turns it into essentially a line drawing and at the moment we've got some colours which kind of represent the colours of the layers where the objects are being clipped. Now what I want to do with this particular kind of pen view is it comes with this sort of papery um, view on the back of this display view and actually I'm not too happy with that I just want it to be a standard white view so we can actually customise these views to sort of fine tune them to the particular look that you want to give your model. To do this, we can drop down in our views and go to display options. Here it will open up our kind of display modes and if we click on this display modes option, we can select that pen display mode, hit copy, and it will make a kind of copy of that and this is just called copy of pen one. That's fine. And then under background, you can see it's set to image file, which is giving it this paper texture. So I'm just gonna to go to the background, just go solid color, and we're gonna set it to white, like so. There are other settings you can kind of tweak here, you can add shadow to objects and add other sort of visibility settings. For now I'm just going to change that background and hit OK. And then we're going to go down, find that copy of pen number one and switch it and you see that you lose that sort of papery background. Now as a kind of final tweak I want to do, I want to explore how to change these section lines in this particular view. To do this we can actually go onto our layers and you'll see now in Rhino 8 we've got this new option called Section Style and this allows us to tweak the kind of way that objects on certain layers are being cut in section by clipping planes. To do this we can go to our walls for example which is this red option here, we'll just zoom in slightly, click on that done and here we can add a hatch pattern, let's add a sort of grid to this, pattern colour, I'm going to do it just black so it's a kind of nice black colour and we'll leave the scale and rotation as per for the boundary, I'm also going to go custom, we're going to just do a continuous line boundary. We're going to set the scale to 4 and we'll do the colour as black too. And you can see there now, we tweaked that section line, we've got a nice hatch in there and we've got a darker black line giving us our sort of section cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pause the video and add that for some other layers here just by going back onto the section style and tweaking those properties for each of my layers to give a custom view for each of them. And here you can see now I've added that hatch in onto those kind of separate layers of this model to give that kind of nice hatch look to the objects that are being cut in section. One last element to check just before we export our final drawing is the print width and also the print color which is this sort of diamond box in your layers here under print color. In order to check how the drawing will be exported we can actually turn on what's called the print display. And this is found just by typing in print display in your command line and setting that state instead of off, which it will be by default, we set that to on. And here you can see actually that even though we've set that section style, the color of these still kind of aligns with the print color here. So what we can do is we can just go down, set the print color to a black if you want them black, and this will start to change all of those kind of print color pieces or the look of these when we print the final file. This also goes for the line weights and actually the print width will determine the width of these lines here, not the section line but the other lines of the object across this file. So we also want to go and just vary these depending on the hierarchy of what we want to give the kind of heavier weight lines. What I'd recommend is when you've got things like timber or really slim pieces of metal we put those on a kind of hairline which will be a very slim line timber. I'm going to put on a 0.13 and then for the walls we can make that slightly thicker 
and you kind of want the thickest lines to be the kind of more dominant pieces of structure, i.e. the kind of larger walls, maybe the ground in this case, and then the slimmer lines to be the slimmer pieces. So the grass bank, I'm going to do slightly bigger. The floor, let's do a kind of slightly smaller there, just so there's a slight differentiation between the very thin lines. Glass we can do as a hairline there. And the inline, let's do as a hairline too. So we're just sort of differentiating these slightly depending on the kind of object we have. So let's just finish making all of these a kind of black line here. And we can just quickly go down and add these in. And then from here, we're then going to capture our drawing from the viewport and save as an image file. So once you've got those all set and you're happy with that kind of look, we can choose the view that we want. And I think from here, I'm going to do a sort of view like this. Then we can go down here, head to capture and go capture to file. Make sure everything's kind of correct in the view. We can add a transparent background if we need to, if we want to overlay it on something. But for now, I'm going to keep it white. We're going to set the resolution. Let's set it relatively high. We'll do 5000 pixels and I'm going to lock it to the aspect ratio. So it's the same ratio as the current view here. And then just hit OK to save that out. And we can save that as a JPEG file like so. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to use clipping planes in Rhino 8 and how we can use the new features with the software in order to create cutaway drawings like so. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating drawings and visuals in Rhino then please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.